Ah yes, the case swap. Something I do about two to three times a year for my own personal rig because I have a problem. I just love changing the look of my PC and trying out a new case. I guess that comes with the territory of working here. Swapping your PC case is one of the biggest aesthetic changes that you can make to your rig. It's also one that if you're just a beginner, you can do with relative ease. But I totally get that for some of you out there, it seems daunting. But trust me, there's not all that much to it. G'day legends, Jono here from Thermaltake Australia and today I want to show you step by step how to swap out your PC case. Now, I'm going to be explaining this with the assumption that you've already picked out your brand new case that you're wanting to swap into. That means you've already done your homework and double check that it will fit your motherboard, has enough storage slots for your hard drive, has room for your graphics card, and has the clearance you need for any cooling solutions you use as in radiator mounts for all-in-one coolers or good depth for large aftermarket air coolers. But if that's something you would like us to do a video on, comment down below and we can whip up video on things you should know before swapping your PC case. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's get started. Step one, the unplugging. Yeah, that's not a word, but it sounds cool. Let's start off by switching your PC's PSU switch to the off position, removing all USB cables and audio jacks from the back of your motherboard. You'll then want to remove your display or HDMI cable from the back of your graphics card. Lastly, you can then go ahead and remove the main AC cable from the back of your power supply. We did this last just so the system has enough time to discharge. Step 2. Removing the easy stuff. We're now going to remove your graphics card and your storage drives if you've got any, as they are the easiest things to remove and they also free up access to the rest of your hardware. Start by laying your case on its side. This just makes things a lot easier. Remove your side panel and then get to work by loosening the screws that secure your graphics card into the PCIe slots. Before we go any further, you'll need to unplug your GPU's PCIe cables. These are located typically on the side of the graphic card here. To detach your graphics card completely, you'll now need to reach in and press down or slide across this little release latch. It's hard to get to sometimes, but once you've either pressed it down or slid it across, depending on your motherboard, it'll release your graphics card and you can shimmy it on out of there. Now it's time to remove some hard drives. In this example, we've got a mechanical drive and an SSD. They're both located in the hard drive bay. Yours could be in a different spot. If you've just got an M.2 drive that's installed directly onto your motherboard, lucky you, you can skip this step. For these drives, we'll remove the power SATA cable, the bigger, wider cable, and then we'll remove the SATA data cable, which is the thinner one. With the cables out of the way, we can now remove the hard drive tray from the bay. These trays are different depending on case manufacturer, but for this model, we'll need to remove the two screws on the sides of the tray so we can then release it. Once the screws are removed, you can reach in and pull the tray out. If yours are toolless, you can just pull the tabs apart like this to release your hard drive. We're going to repeat the same process for our SSD, but once the tray is out, you might have to unscrew the SSD from the tray. This may require a slightly smaller Phillips head screwdriver. Place a mechanical hard drive somewhere safe for later. These are very fragile and you do not want to have them near anything magnetic or drop them or else bye bye data. Step three, the unplugging two, electric boogaloo. With a graphics card out of the way, it's time to reach down into the depths of the case and start to unplug things. Right now would be a great time to take as many photos as you need as a safety measure to see where every cable plugs into. We'll start by removing the 24-pin cable, which is generally on the right side of your motherboard. This big bloke right here. Don't be alarmed if the cable is a bit stubborn, that's totally normal. Next, we'll tackle the CPU 4 plus 4-pin cable, which is located more often than not at the top left of your motherboard. Once again, this one may be a bit stubborn, but with enough confidence, it will come loose. Now we can get started on the smaller cables. There's normally a front panel audio cable here, so remove that. We'll also remove the USB 3 and 2 front panel connectors, any RGB cable headers, and of course, our front panel power button, reset, and LED indicator cables. That's probably going to be the scariest one for you, but rest assured, you'll be able to put them all back easily. But for safety measures, whip out your phone now and take a photo of the configuration just for safety. Then we can go ahead and remove the SATA data cables from the SATA ports on your motherboard. 
Now the last few things to do will vary greatly between builds, but if you have multiple fans which are connected to your motherboard fan headers, you'll need to remove those. If you have a large aftermarket cooler, you won't need to remove the cooler, but unplugging the fan header cable it's connected to wouldn't be a bad idea. Finally, if you're a part of the elite group of all-in-one cooler owners, then we've got a few extra steps for you to do. You're going to want to grab some paper towel or a microfiber cloth that you're okay with sacrificing for this. Start by unplugging the pump blocks cable. It'll look like a fan connector. And then start unscrewing the pump mounting bracket. Some have four screws on the outside, but ours here has only one thumb screw. If you have a traditional four screw mounting plate, unscrew these about halfway first in a cross pattern before returning to the start to complete the unscrewing process. You're doing this in a way to make sure you're not causing too much pressure on one side and squishing the thermal paste everywhere. Remove the pump lock from the CPU socket and clean the underside with that paper towel or microfiber you have prepared. You'll also want to gently clean the top of your CPU as well because we're going to apply some new thermal paste for this a little later. You can then move the pump head into a position away from the motherboard and we're done with unplugging everything. Step four, gutting the carcass. I'm sure there's a much better name for this, but anyhow, we're going to be stripping the case for the rest of your components. We'll start by removing your motherboard. Depending on your motherboard's form factor, there can be anywhere between four and 12 screws securing it to the case. We're going to remove them, making sure we are using a nice, well-maintained Phillips head screwdriver because we do not want to strip the heads. You can expect to find around nine screws on a standard ATX motherboard, three at the top, three at the bottom, and then three across the middle. With those removed, we can now gently remove the motherboard from the case and place it on a box or at the minimum, somewhere safe for the time being. We'll now pop out the sharpest blade known to man, AKA the IO shield. To finish off, we'll now remove the fans from the case. To remove fans, there should be four self-tapered screws on the outside of the frame. So just remove those and we're good to go. If you have an all-in-one, we'll leave the fans on the radiator, but we'll obviously remove the screws holding it in place on the case. It's the same deal here, just be careful not to drop the radiator when unscrewing it. The last thing we need to do is strip out the PSU. We're trying to make this as simple as possible here, so we'll first remove the four screws holding it into the case, which are located on the outside. After we've removed those, we can then begin to slide the PSU out from its bay. The aim here is to leave all of your cables plugged in so you don't have to plug any back into the PSU. With this model specifically though, it's non-modular, so the cables can't be detached anyway. But while you're here, detach any other accessories like fan controllers and remove your SATA cables as well. Step five, moving in. Alrighty, we're finally at the exciting part. It's time to bring over that shiny new case you've been itching to have sat on your desk. The first thing to do is to remove the box of the goodies that your case would have come with. They're normally lodged in the hard drive cage or PSU shroud area. This will include cable ties, screws, stickers, and manuals. To kick things off, we'll start with a PSU. Slide that into your new case and zip up the four screws to secure it into place. Flip the case over because next we're going to grab the IO shield that we removed before and reinstall that into the new case. With this step alone, you've already ascended into the glorious PC master race. Seriously though, so many people forget to do this step, myself included. Now it's time to lower the motherboard back into the case. And just before we do that though, we'll ensure that the case has all of its motherboard standoff screws ready and installed. This is something that's already done in almost every single case on the market today, but it's still worth checking. If yours doesn't have them installed, they will be in the box that you removed earlier, and you'll need to follow the markings printed on the case as to where to install them for your form factor motherboard. So now we'll lower the motherboard into place and we'll line up the standoff holes to determine if we've lined it up correctly. Check your manual to find which screws you'll need to use for your motherboard standoffs. Then get to work securing your motherboard to the case. Step six, it's cable time. Now comes the part that you're probably more worried about than anything, plugging in all of the cables. Never fear, this is straightforward and you've also got those handy photos you took a little earlier to help you. You did take those photos, right? Let's tackle this beast one cable at a time. Start with routing your eight pin CPU cable to the top left. We'll then push the 24 pin cable through the cable grommets and plug that in. 
Just like when removing it, it may take a wee bit of confidence pushing it to go back in. Next, we'll plug the CPU cable in. Now this cable should have CPU written on the side of it, but if it doesn't, the easiest way to double check that it's the correct one is if it splits into four plus four mini plugs. Working our way down the board, we'll plug the two SATA data cables back in. These can only go in one way as they're an L shape. Now we're going to grab the bunch of cables that are attached to your case and weave them through any cable cutout areas we can find so we can plug them in as well. Moving from left to right, we'll start with the front panel audio plug, which is your mic and headphones port on the front panel. We'll then move to the USB headers. And in this case, we've just got a USB 3.0 to plug in. This cable here is a USB-C cable, but we don't have that one on this motherboard, so we don't need it. And then lastly, the power button, reset, and LED indicator plugs. These differ greatly between motherboards, but are typically located bottom right on most of them. So just gonna quickly cut in here. Uh, these headers are going to be different for everybody. So check your motherboard manual, but power switch, hard drive LED, power LEDs, they all plug into here. So uh, they're very finicky, but that's why you took a mobile photo earlier to help you with that one. But it's not as hard as it seems. Step seven, reinstalling the all-in-one CPU cooler. I got a little less creative on that one. So this next part is if you have an all-in-one cooler to reinstall, but if you don't need to do that, all you need to do is skip ahead to this time right here. If you're still with me, let's get cracking. In this case, we need to remove the SSD mounting bracket here because our radiator mount is actually on the side of the motherboard. However, you'd probably be mounting yours at the top of your case or even the front. Either way, keep in mind the orientation of your radiator, the block, and the tubing. You can check out a video where we address the right way to install one here. Go ahead and secure your radiator to the case. Phew, it's showtime! Time to apply some thermal paste. I like to go with a pea-sized blob approach. You can draw a Z, an X, or do whatever you like. But honestly, this right here is fine. Grab your all-in-one pump and we're going to mount it to your CPU. Just be nice and gentle with placing it atop of your CPU. You don't want to be squishing thermal paste everywhere. Tighten up the screws for your mounting bracket and in our case, it's just that thumb screw. Don't forget, we'll need to plug the pump controller cable, the one that looks like a fan cable, back into a fan port on the motherboard. I normally go with the CPU underscore fan because I prefer the default power curve it gives, but you can also plug it into one that says all-in-one pump or sys fan. Step eight, I haven't got a title. It's time to get your hard drive on or in. Either way, terrible joke. Anyhow, we're finally ready to stand this sucker up and reinstall our storage drives. Remember how I mentioned toolless drive base? Well, that's what we're working with now push those side tabs in and pull the tray towards you and it'll slide right out. While the tray itself is toolless, securing the hard drive into the tray requires four small screws on the corners. Now look, I'm totally one of those guys that uses only two screws where I should be using four on most things, but here you shouldn't skip out. Hard drives are fragile, do the right thing. Once they're all in, push the tray back into the cage and it should click into place. Onto the SSD. This case has an SSD mounting bracket, so we'll remove that first and then place our SSD onto the tray. But remember to take note of where the inputs are facing. You want them facing the bottom of your case. Line up the SSD with the four mounting screw holes on the tray, then using the tiny screws, zip that bad boy up on all four corners. For the final stage of this part of the installation, we'll grab the SATA power cable from the power supply, which looks like this, and we'll line it up with the input on the SSD and plug it in. I find this part easier to do before we mount the tray back on the case. Then we'll fish into the case to find one of the ends of the small SATA data cables we plugged in earlier and plug that in as well. Repeat the same steps for your hard drive as well. Now this last step is included here because it still uses the SATA power cable, but it's not a hard drive. It's actually a fan controller that comes with a case. So while we are here, take the time to plug in any accessories you need to, including your Molex power cable ones as well. To round it all out, while we're plugging things in, let's grab those fan cables and plug them into the fan headers on your motherboard. If your new case comes with additional fans, you might have a few more to plug in. 
so you can always use one of these three fan splitters to save yourself using three fan headers. Step nine, installing the GPU. It's the home stretch. So starting off, we're going to need to grab the PCIe cables from your PSU. If you can't find these, you might find them labeled VGA instead. Check under your motherboard for the best cable routing options for you, as having the cables pop out under your motherboard is the best way to go. Leave them here for a bit, because we're coming back to them in a second. Now move over to your PCIe bracket. Most cards of these days require two slots to be removed, and sometimes three. Just hovering your card inside your case over the PCIe slots will help you identify how many to remove. For whatever reason I can't explain, you just never need to use the top one and usually end up removing the second and the third like so. In this instance, I've got a safety release too, so simply remove that and then remove the two PCIe brackets that you need. Shift the case onto its backside. It's now time to grab your GPU. First, make sure that the little notch is pushed back, which will allow your graphics card to slide in. Then line the teeth up with the GPU into the topmost motherboard slot and press that bad boy back in. You should hear a nice click, which will tell you it's installed the right way. Then secure the card back in place by screwing it in where we just removed those brackets. Now that the GPU is all secure, simply grab those PCIe cables we fed through before and plug those boys back in. Your graphics card should now be successfully installed. Step 10, which is optional, cable management. Now look, it's no secret that cable management is not my area of expertise, but I try my best, okay? Spending a bit of time tidying up the cables out the back can save you a world of hurt later, even if it's just grabbing some cable ties and chucking a bunch of random cables together. Cable management is honestly one of those things that you just get better at with time, so give it your best, make it look as neat as possible. But don't lose sleep over it. The tried and true, crave everything back into your case and seal it with a back panel and just hope nobody looks at it method is still a solid option I use all the time. And speaking of sliding that back panel on, that's the last thing you need to do. Seal it all up and guess what? You've just moved your PC. Congratulations, you have achieved what many before you have shuddered in fear of and have given your setup a fresh new look in one of the simplest ways possible. Now give yourself a pat on the back and have a well-deserved rest. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like the video and pop a comment down below. And if you didn't enjoy it, then why are you still here? Go outside or something. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, especially during this busy daily upload August, and we'll see you tomorrow. But if you're still around, then check out either of these two videos. Oops, I just knock the case. Either of these two videos. Yeah, I think I'm done with talking. Um, bye. <laughs> Anyhow, we're finally ready to start this sucker up and reinstall our storage drives. <laughs> Stand this.